very appreciative and uh, very appreciative and very appreciate all what you are talking about it. Good day and good day to us in the viewers of Afrinidia. Thank you. Thank you, Afrinidia. Thank you for what you are doing. organization of La Francophonie ended in the Tunisian island of Jeba on Sunday, November 20, with the head of the group, Louisa Mushikiwabo, noting that there had been long discussions about the main conflict zones and said the group could support and quicken efforts to uh, mediate between parties in conflict to discuss growing instability in parts of Francophone Africa, including in parts of the Sahel and east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Secretary uh, General, who was elected for a second term, promised to do more to resolve a crisis. The two-day conference took place against the backdrop of uh, growing uh, instability in the Sahel, the Great Lakes uh, regions, and uh, popular discontent in Francophone Africa. Uh, tensions, however, crept into the International Organization of La Francophonie, IOF, conference when the Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Jean-Michel Lassama Lukonde, refused to pose for a photo next to Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda. Now the DRC accuses Rwanda of supporting M23 rebels who have seized a suite of a territory in its eastern region, displacing tens of thousands of people and igniting regional tensions. The IOF, uh, founded was uh, uh, founded in 90, uh, was founded in 1970 with the aim to promote the French language, develop economic uh, cooperation, and help mediate international conflict. But many African leaders have expressed uh, dismay at the West's rapid response to the war in Ukraine in contrast to conflicts in their own countries. The organization has been accused of being powerless in the face of fraudulent elections, uh, power grabs, and coups in many of its member states. Uh, can La Francophonie therefore play a vital role towards resolving conflicts in Africa? Stay with us. This is Views on the Continent. Very it is always our pleasure to know you're watching Africa Media. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this uh, very first edition for the week of uh, Views on the Continent, where we uh, examine issues uh, that are pertinent to the continent. And today uh, we are talking about uh, the role La Francophonie is uh, playing or plans to play in resolving conflict in Africa as the uh, uh, organization just ended its 18th summit in Tunisia on uh, Sunday, November. 20 with uh, the uh, head of the organization that's the secretary general Louise Mushikiwabo promising that uh, there has there have been long debates on uh, uh, conflict or on on crisis uh, around the world and uh, they are going to do something in uh, resolving uh, conflicts especially in uh, Africa to discuss the uh, unrest that has been uh, uh, plaguing the continent for some time and now uh, and now the question we are putting out is uh, can La Franco actually play a vital role towards resolving uh, conflicts in Africa. So that's going to be a point of uh, discussion this day. That's going to be our focus this day. What role can, the Frank, uh, can La Francophonie uh, play in resolving conflicts uh, in Africa of late? The continent has faced uh, quite a great number of uh, issues, uh, coup d'etats, uh, conflict, uh, uh, demonstrations, uh, and uh, uh, people calling uh, for a return to civilian rule after military uh, took part in some uh, uh, countries in the continent. So it is an interactive program for those of you who are joining us for the very first time. This is an interactive uh, program where you can always call and tell us what you think uh, about the day's topic or any other issue that is of interest uh, uh, to the continent at this uh, point in time. Uh, so when the time is right, our numbers will be put on the screen. You can uh, call us and tell us what you think. And also, it is a platform where we get to uh, uh, exchange ideas with uh, some resource persons uh, who will enlighten us 
us more about the day's topic. And today with us, we have three gentlemen. And uh, for now, we have uh, with us uh, uh, Paseka Farumele. He is joining us uh, from South Africa. He is a member of uh, the uh, Convention for uh, Pan-Africanism and uh, uh, Patriotism, if I got that right, uh, and uh, the University of South Africa scholar. Hello, and thanks for joining us on the program this day, Paseka. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. I am looking forward to this engagement and, um, um, you know, having a, 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 a fulfilling uh, engagement for not just ourselves, but for the rest of the continent, specifically the viewers who will be watching the program. I'm really looking forward to this. So thank you so much for joining us this day on the program and for honoring our invitation. And in the course of the program, we shall also be joined by Adrian Atam Ebakoa. He is a Pan-Africanist and also Mr. Elijah Enoako, who happens to be a researcher with Lakes University on African Development. So they, these two gentlemen will be joining us in the course of the program. So let's begin with you, Paseka. When you were take a look at what has been happening on the continent and we have organizations uh, like uh, La Fran Francophonie, uh, which uh, was founded in uh, uh, 1970, and its uh, aim uh, was to uh, promote the French language, develop economic cooperation, and help mediate international uh, conflicts. And when you take a look at what has been happening in Africa of late, where can you place uh, La Francophonie? Um. It, it's very difficult to actually position them in any way or form because the gist of what they were supposed to do initially when they were initiated is to continue the perpetuation of, of, of uh, French domination, specifically the language and the culture of the French people within specifically the countries that speak French, that were colonies of France, and and potentially extended to other countries that are located, you know, uh, uh, around it or countries of interest to specifically friends. So it is very difficult to position them in any way or form in this current context because they've been in the continent for an extended period of time now, or they've been in existence for a prolonged period of time now. But the roles that they've played in terms of trying to nullify the controversies that we've seen, the, re the, 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 the revolts that we've seen throughout the continent, the wars that we've seen specifically in Francophone countries has been next to nothing so it is very difficult for us to say that can they actually play a role uh towards um resolving conflict especially throughout the continent as big as africa because at the end of the day the benefit for them has not really been for the 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 the, the countries that had been under french um french oppression or you can say supervision but um it's it's very much oppression under french oppression those countries that have been uh forced to be in cahoots with france is uh have continued Continue to see themselves having a lot of revolts in recent history, and the 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 the, the role that uh, La Francophone has played is next to nothing. So it is very difficult for us us to say that we can uh, give them a spot of positionality if it's not to perpetuate friends um friends uh, 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 success more than anything so uh I, I really struggle to conceptualize an idea or a world where you would find that they would play a sufficient role in actually helping in resolving these problems that we continue to see in africa specifically and particularly in the francophone countries a number of francophone countries have seen themselves having coup d'etats in recent history, and they've not played a significant role. That's why I maintain the statement that for me, and from the position that I depart from, I do not see them as proponents that aim to liberate and help the countries that are within the continent of Africa, but their role is to always make sure that they work towards uh, uh, perpetually uh, increasing the influence of France in the continent. Secretary General of the organization, uh, Luis uh, Mushikiwabo, who uh, says uh, there had been uh, long discussions about the uh, main conflict zones, and she says the group could uh, support and quicken efforts to mediate uh, between parties in conflicts to discuss uh, growing insecurity in parts of uh, uh, Francophone Africa, including in uh, uh, parts of the Sahel and the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Do you think uh, she's uh, saying this uh, just to pull the attention of Africans or she actually means this and that the organization is going to do something to uh, intervene in uh, the uh, conflicts in this region. 
Um, yeah, no, I think at this point, these are just words without action because um, it is easy to see. It is easy to see. It is not as though the Francophone is a new organization that is aimed towards helping these specific countries. Because if that was the case, then she would be able to make the statement. But the role that it has played uh, historically and until to date has not been one that is actually aimed towards helping the countries that have been suppressed under this uh, guardianship, basically, of France. You know, the role that it has played, it, so it becomes very very difficult. It becomes very difficult to make the argument that the position that she is currently departing from is a position that is actually aimed uh, at fulfilling or helping and attracting African countries because the only way that they know that they could help African countries is a way that they would have uh, started a long time ago by actually playing an active role in making sure that countries that have been under uh, friends rule or that have said that have been said to be working with the friends currently with the French currently uh, find themselves in a, in, in a better position than they currently are. I know that things are, are not perfect in the continent. And uh, I know that we could be a lot further than where we currently are, uh, but I can only hope at this point in time that the, uh, uh, the, the words that were spoken could actually lead us towards a better position than what we currently find ourselves in. Look at uh, the la, la, la Francophonie and the African states that are part of this organization. We have uh, quite a number of them that have faced crisis in recent times. We have Mali, we have Burkina Faso, we have uh, Guinea, and uh, nothing. The organization seems not to have done anything to intervene in the crisis of this country. So, what explains the fact that these countries continue to be part of such organizations that don't have, don't have their interest at heart? That is exactly where my problem is, and that is why I find the statement being just that could actually lead to actions. This is just them uh, acting out for perception, not them acting out in an effort to make sure that there is some action that will take place at a later stage. This is basically what is currently happening, because a number of these countries have found themselves in turmoil without the assistance of La Francophonie, you know. So if that was not the case, if we had found ourselves in a position where they had actually done something, at the to the benefit of the country if they had been intermediaries between the revolutionaries and the government if they had stood in place and said um you know what we are actually going to play an active role in trying to make sure that there is satisfaction on both sides we are trying to play a role whereby we are going to make sure that the population of the country is not going to continue suffering at the rate that it continues to suffer i mean there is a, a serious problem that we've seen in mali specifically and where were they all this time in Mali, we've seen so many coup d'etat in Burkina Faso. What role did they play in trying to make sure that the general population on the ground is not victims of uh, uh, is not victims of 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 a, 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 of a regime change? You know, if they had actually decided that they were going to play an active role in trying to fulfill uh, 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 the improvement betterment of the population on the ground, then something to engage on but at this current moment it is very difficult for us to come and make an argument and say that they can actually now all of a sudden play a role in changing the realities of these countries affirmation countries specifically if you're just joining us this is views on the continent and we are talking about uh, la francophonia what a role it can actually play in resolving uh, conflicts in africa if actually it can play a vital role in resolving conflicts in africa now the secretary general of the uh, organization as uh, mentioned in the organization's uh, just ended uh, conference in uh, tunisia that uh, there were uh, long debates on uh, how to uh, resolve conflict uh, in in this uh, in this uh, resolve crisis in this conflict zone and uh, she's saying that she was she also mentioned that uh, um, the the organization would try to uh, bring uh, 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 partners or bring uh, these people in these regions that have uh, this crisis to try to discuss to find a way out of the uh, crisis so how true is this is this only in theory or the organization actually plans to take practical steps in resolving crisis in africa so we would like to hear from you our lines are open 
you can always uh, call us and uh, tell us what you think about uh, this uh, topic. Also, this program is streaming live on Facebook. Uh, you can visit our Facebook page and uh, drop a comment and uh, we shall uh, we shall read it out to you. So uh, the lines are open. Call us, tell us what you think about uh, the day's uh, topic. Now, let's uh, uh, get back to uh, the uh, discussion of the day, uh, Paseka. Now, uh, the, it is mentioned that uh, in, in the course of the uh, summit, uh, there was some kind of tension as when it was time for uh, snapshots, it was time for to take uh, photographs. Uh, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, the uh, Democratic Republic of uh, uh, Congo, uh, uh, in the person of uh, Jean Michel uh, Sama Lukonde, uh, refused to pose for a photo next to uh, President uh, Paul Kagame of Rwanda. We know in recent times there has uh, been uh, uh, some ten or there have been tensions between uh, these uh, two countries, with uh, 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 the DRC accusing uh, uh, Rwanda of supporting the M23 rebels in the DRC. So what can you say about this? You know, it is, a, it is a very difficult one because at this point in time, we will need to have enough evidence for us to actually make an argument. But because it's been a process that has been happening for so long and there has been witness um, witness testaments that have said that these M23 members have been sponsored by specifically Rwanda, it, 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 it does give us a foot in the engagement itself. As, as, as I'm saying that, it is a very difficult one, but at the end of the day, it is one which we need to have. And this also brings us to the idea of Pan-Africanism in, 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 in the way that we observe it as Pan-Africanists. Be because it makes our engagement very difficult because what it says is that we as a continent ourselves are very problematic, you know, because if we cannot come together as a continent, how do we think that we will be able to kick out these foreign invaders who continue to plunder the continent of Africa? It is borderline impossible because at the end of the day, if we cannot come together and we make sure that we, 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 we plan together, we stay together, we stick together, we do not continue to fund so-called terrorist groups then in that way we we, we we could actually go forward but now in this current reality shall be coming back to uh, what uh, Paseka has to say uh, as concerns uh, this uh, tension between uh, uh, Rwanda and uh, the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Now the question is, uh, uh, President uh, of a country uh, that seemed to be developing uh, faster than any other country in uh, the uh, African continent. Uh, Paseka is back with us. Carry on, Paseka. I'm sorry about that. I just lost you for a minute there. Uh, yeah, so uh, what I was saying is that the difficulty is that at this point in time, it is very difficult for us as a continent to come together, because if we continue these nice uh, nationalistic ideologies, then it is very going to be very difficult for us to move forward. But also, if we do not take our leaders to account, then it will be very difficult for us to move forward, because the, it does not make sense that uh, two African leaders can be uh, surrounded by other uh, leaders who are, who are product of France, if I can say, uh, and still they decide that they cannot stand together. It gives you the idea that Africa itself is a long way from being united as a continent, because what it means is that we as a continent are far removed from each other in terms of ideology, in terms of uh, our working together, because for us to work together as a continent, we will need our leadership to come together and we will need to make sure that our leaders do not have these problems where now they cannot take pictures next to each other just because they feel as though they are, uh, uh, what do you call this, they are neighbors have been uh, doing sneaky business behind their backs funding uh, groups that aim to topple the current government you know if if this is the case then it makes it somewhat borderline impossible for us to think that in, in the near future we would be able to have a united continent of africa and that is quite worrying if you think about it because we believe that as pan africanists a continent such as africa can go a long way in terms of its success in it in its uh, development if we were to actually come together but because of these realities these sad realities that we are faced with it becomes impossible for us to find ourselves within these within the grasp of success because we continue to fight 
with each other within our own continent? How are we going to successfully defend ourselves against outsiders if we ourselves cannot come together? You know, a divided home cannot stand against any enemy. It's impossible. That is what makes it so difficult. And that is why I, 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 I struggle when I see African, African leaders who go out to the rest of the world and they show that we continue to live in a continent divided. We continue to live in a continent that is uh, uh, that is uh, that is totaled up basically by borders. That is said, um, you rationalize con the continent through its own borders. It becomes very difficult. You know, it is it is a it is a point of 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 no return at this point, and it is very worrying if this continues to happen. And I, I understand why a leader would be so frustrated as to say that. I feel that if you continue to fund the enemies of this country, then you are also an enemy of the country. I understand where they're coming from. But if we have enough evidence, then the continent of Africa itself, the AU specifically, should have the power to come out and call out a country that is funding terrorism. Because this is not the first time. We also saw something similar in Ethiopia several years back, whereby there were talks of the, uh, the, 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 the neighbors funding terrorist groups you know, if this continues, then it says a lot about what we are going to see in the future of the continent. And it tells us about how far we are as a continent to a united, a united front. It's uh, struggling to uh, come together as a continent. But when we have leaders who cannot agree and who cannot uh, sit down and talk and they find themselves in such, uh, in, in such um, uh, an area or in such an event and they are not able to stand side by side for a uh, photo shoot and then it becomes very problematic. What then can the African continent do uh, to have leaders uh, be on the same page? What is stopping leaders from trying to uh, resolve of their issues at the level of the continent and uh, we don't find such sins uh, in the future uh the first thing that would need to happen is that we would need to understand that the continent is separated by western ideologies and ideas the continent continues to to be separated by ideas of languages which we inherited from our own oppressors. Right now, I always look at Cameroon as the perfect uh, example when we see the tensions that we've seen over the years between the Francophone and the Anglophones. These two groups are basically people of the same continent. They are the same person, but it is very difficult for them to come together. Why? Because of languages which we inherited from the outside. Because of that, because of language is an ideology in itself. Language teaches us ways of existing and language makes us pick associations. So because of these languages that continue to separate each other, it becomes very problematic for us and it becomes very difficult for us to come together as a continent moving forward. So that's the first thing that we need to take care of. This division that we continue to see that is centered around ideology and specifically ideology which is, divide, which is developed through language, which eventually develops culture and cultural practice. If we can take care of that first thing, then we can go somewhere. The second thing and the most important thing for me is always the African Union. The actions of the African Union should be able to come in and make sure that it nullifies these tensions that we continue to see throughout the continent. Because if we continue to have tensions amongst ourselves, then we cannot uh, battle any of the tensions or any of the problems that we continue to see in the continent which have been influenced by external forces. When I say external forces in this context, I do not specifically focus on the West play in the continent, but I also refer to religious influences that come externally. These religious in, uh, uh, leadership, uh, these religious influences, they come in and they influence our people and radicalize them at the bottom so that they can turn out to kill their own people in the continent based on religious ideology itself. You see, so this is why it is very difficult for us to actually move and go somewhere. But I believe a strong AU should be strong enough and should be willing enough 
to enable countries at the bottom to resolve these fights amongst themselves. But they should be able to play a, 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 a mediating role in trying to resolve these problems because without them, it is very difficult. You know, the problem that we saw recently in Tigray, specifically in Ethiopia, the reason why it was able to get to a point where people were uh, uh, where, 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 where rebels and the government were able to, 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 to come to a concession, it was because of external, uh, 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 of external, uh, what do you Maybe. call this? External uh, inter in interventions, mm -hmm. specifically some members of the EU had to come in and they had to play an active role in trying to resolve this issue. If this could happen throughout the continent, then we would actually find ourselves in a better position than we currently find ourselves in. Because right now we are in a position because we do not have proper leadership from the very top of the continent. Without the AU finding stability, then we are in a total disastrous position moving forward, not just historically, but moving forward, we are in a point of disaster. If that can be resolved, I promise you that we can find ourselves not having to see African leaders going in the outside and exposing their own problems within the continent. If that could happen, then we would be actually going towards a one Africa uh, 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 future, which we know is going to be very difficult. It is very difficult already because we can see the amount of xenophobia throughout the continent itself. You know, we always have to, uh, South Africa is always a good example because these are reoccurring occurrences, but the reality is that it's a continental problem that we continue to see. Black people in the continent do not love other black people based off Western morals and ideologies. And also these problems are also problems that you think about it, I'm not going to go away anytime soon until the AU is able to sort itself out. Because once the AU is able to sort out to sort to sort itself out, then we are able to have the Western bloc solving itself out. We have the Eastern bloc solving itself out, the North and the South, the, the Southern uh, uh, bloc sorting itself out. Once that happens, then and only then can we actually have desires and uh, and dreams of a united continent. But it all starts with one group, and that is the leadership of the continent, specifically the AU. Francophonie, la francophonie, as I said, I do not see what role it will play, an active role in trying to sort out the problems that we are faced with. If France itself continues to fail dismally in trying to help out help out, and I say this in quotation marks, because we know the problems that they themselves have caused throughout the continent and continue to cross to cause throughout the continent. If they have failed so dismally, La Francophonie, where would it get the power to come in and resolve these problems that we are faced with on a daily basis? You know, if we do not sort ourselves out, we are not going to go anywhere. That's right. Thank you so much, uh, Paseka. Now, talking of uh, the uh, African Union, we know this is uh, a continental uh, body that is supposed to oversee the uh, problems of the continent. But over time, uh, many uh, critics and uh, many uh, pundits have uh, uh, criticized, even Africans themselves have criticized this organization, this block of not uh, actually playing the role it is supposed to play in uh, uh, the uh, continent when countries have conflicts, uh, it is supposed to oversee. But most of the times, uh, people have mentioned that. Uh, the uh, bloc is uh, being uh, controlled by the West. So what do you see the African Union uh, changing anytime soon and trying uh, uh, to actually take the issues of the continent more seriously? Because uh, if, you, if, you, if you sample a number of Africans and ask what role the African Union is playing or has played or plans to play in the future in uh, resolving conflicts in the continent, they are going to tell you outrightly that they have lost interest, they have lost confidence in the bloc. So what needs to be done for the African Union to play its role properly? You know, um, we always need to, 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 when having these engagements, we always need to remind ourselves that these organizations or these unions, at times and most of the time, function as a proponent of the West. They will do everything in their power to make sure that they do not uh, anger the West. That is the first thing that we always have to keep in mind. I think about ECOWAS 
and how it reacted and it uh, continued to react for a very long time towards Mali. When the people on the ground re rose up and problematized the realities that were happening in Mali, ECOWAS played no role until there needed to be radical action through the military. And we had the coup that we saw. ECOWAS only then decided that they were going to play a role in uh, providing sanctions to the government of Mali, even though the people on the ground were specifically saying that this is what we've been speaking about and this is what we've been problematizing, this is what we've been requesting your assistance for. So what that tells you is that because of the radical nature of the Mali government, which is the military government, because of the way that they think and the way that they set themselves up and being anti-French, and being radically against French ideology. Because of that, ECOWAS had to make sure that it continues to protect the interests of France, which makes me be able to make the argument that these are uh, unions and organization and governing bodies, they operate as proponents of protection for the West. So coming back to your question, in the specific case of the African Union, it does everything that it does at face value, not for the protection of African people, but for the values of everyone else outside the continent of Africa before it can take care of the people on the ground. Like you indicated, if you were to take a sample size of the population of the continent and you ask them about the value, the tangible value, of the au they would all majority come to one conclusion they will not be able to tell you what is it that they're actually doing in the continent to make sure that there's actual tangible differences on the ground for africans mm. you, you know if that is the case if that is the case then we have to now come back to the question what is the role of of the au until the AU proves itself to stand for the people, the same way that until a union such as ECOWAS shows itself to stand for the people on the ground, not to stand for governing bodies, not to stand for those who are outside, until then, we are in a total disaster area because these unions are supposed to be helping us. But if anything, they continue to stand there and let everyone else do as they please at the expense of the people on the ground. That is where the issue is. If they continue to just be observers, because they will tell you that they aim for sovereignty throughout the continent, at what cost is sovereignty to the people on the ground? Should the people continue to suffer at the ground while you continue to argue sovereignty, while you continue to argue that you are observant in your position? The people continue to suffer, they continue to go hungry, they continue to be entangled in wars that do not have anything to do with them, but continue to benefit the West in terms of them, continue to reap the rewards of these wars by stealing from the continent, by continuing to, to plunder the raw materials and the raw minerals of this continent. You know, if their role is not to protect us, then it means that in any time from now, we are not going to see a radical or a drastic change in their ideology moving forward. If anything, we'll continue seeing them being as they are, as useless as they continue to be, and problematic as they continue to be. You know, because it, at the end of the day, what matters is not what they think and what they can do, is what is happening to the people of the ground. If you continue to take a position of being, uh, 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 of being neutral in matters of oppression, then you are with the oppressor. That is a fact. Anyone who makes the argument that I do not get involved in these matters, I continue to observe. Anyone who makes that argument, when one is being oppressed by an oppressor, that person is siding with the oppressor. That person does not hold a position of neutrality because in matters of oppression, there is no neutrality. You cannot decide that you are going to take a position of neutrality. All right, uh, thank you so much, uh, Paseka. We are still on. Uh, those of you who are joining us, you can always uh, join the program by uh, calling us. Our numbers are on the screen. Uh, you can call us, tell us what you think about today's topic, about uh, La Francophonie. Do you think it can play a vital role towards a resolving conflict in Africa? The Secretary General of uh, the uh, organization, Luisa Mushikiwabo, says uh, that the uh, 
organization uh, is going uh, to uh, try its best in uh, uh, resolving conflicts in the continent. Uh, and uh, the uh, organization just had its 18th uh, uh, summit uh, in uh, Tunisia, uh, in Tunisia, and they discussed about the crisis that have been plaguing the continent. Uh, quite a good number of countries that have faced crisis in uh, recent times are part of this uh, organization, especially in uh, Francophone Africa. What has uh, this organization, La Francophonie, done in, uh, uh, in, in resolving crisis in this country? Uh, so what a role is it playing, uh, do you think, in the future? or oh, in any time soon, it's going to do something in resolving crisis in this uh, country. So we would like to hear from you. We are actually, uh, actually streaming live on Facebook. You can always uh, drop a comment. Tell us what you think about uh, today's uh, topic. Uh, Coming back to you, uh, Paseka, now, uh, earlier on you mentioned something about uh, the country, the continents not being united. There's the issue of language as well. Uh, do you think if the continent is able, and uh, is it even possible that uh, Africa can have one language? And even if that's possible, uh, do you think it's going to uh, solve this uh, problem of this unity of the uh, continent not uh, being united? I, I know uh, some time back, uh, the uh, East Africa region uh, was thinking of uh, making uh, Kishwahili uh, 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 a language for the region. Uh, so, do you think if the continent adopts this uh, uh, this issue, um, the, the, of the, the issue of having just one language, and then the continent can move forward? It will not resolve all the problems. The reality is that it will not resolve all the problems. Uh, but it is a step towards resolving the problems. That is the most important thing that we always need to keep in mind because the error that we do is thinking that there's going to be a one way for us to resolve our problems as a continent. So it is not going to one, 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 it is going to be a step mm -hmm. in us moving forward as a united continent it will not be the, the, the answer to all our problems. Problem, yeah. That is the main thing that we need to keep in mind. But it is going to be an important step in us being able to move away from the position of the vision that we find ourselves in. I made the point and I emphasized the point that we need to be cognizant of the fact that language is one of the main reasons that we think the way that we think. Mm. There's an entire body of work in philosophy and ideology where you see how language plays a role in how we see our own realities, how we see others, how we understand others and how it goes vice versa. So a common language speaks to the human themselves and offers a level of familiarity with ourselves. And as you asked, the possibility of this happening, it is very difficult for us to see this happening, but it is very possible for us to do it. You cannot make the argument that uh, the, 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 the majority of Asia is able to understand a similar language. They do not speak the same language, um, but they understand a similar language, a huge chunk of them. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's the most spoken language in the whole world. That is where you see that it is very possible for us to be able to have as many Africans as far as in the late 70% of the continent being able to speak one common language. And this would also make a lot of things a lot more simplified, whether it is trade, whether it's um, economic engagement, whether it is just general uh, uh, community building. This would go a long way in being able to do that. And I loved the idea that was presented in the Eastern Bloc and specifically in, in the East of Africa when they had said that it would actually be positive for us to make sure that we continue using or we go to a point where all of us use Swahili to make sure that it it, it, it it brings us closer to each other. Mm -hmm. If that would happen, I always like now, I always listen to how the Bantu speakers of specifically Zulu in South Africa are able to hear Swahili. They are able to hear certain words specifically in, Sawi in Swahili. The Bantu speakers in South Africa are able to hear a language that is there. And there are so many words that we share with a number of countries in the continent that you can hear anything, but does this mean the same thing? And people say, yeah, no, it means the exact same thing. When you hear that, you think to yourself, how is it not possible for us to say that as a continent, we could have an initiative 
that is started specifically by these same the same organization or the same union that have been critiquing the AU, which says that children from the time that they start primary school, they will be taught in a specific language or they will learn a specific language. By the time these children are done with primary school, high school, they will be so fluent or inf uh, fluent actually in the language that it should not be pro problematic for them to engage with someone who is in the in the west of Africa or in the south of Africa, in the east of Africa with the common language. By the time that they get there, they should become uh, comfortable enough to be able to speak these languages. But we must not also uh, 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 stay in these positions of idealistic thinking too much because we always need to keep in mind that we live in a world that is nationalistic uh, in, 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 in its origins. People do not want to let go of their things. The first question that will come specifically from Africans in the continent will be why specifically Swahili? Why don't we use my language? I don't want to learn any other language. I don't want to learn a language that is uh, uh, that is um, that comes from the outside. But they do not recognize the bigger picture of this action because the children who will be beneficiaries of this union are the children who will be starting at the very bottom of school all the way to the end. Even those who will not be able to finish, but they will be able to understand to an extent that similar language that they would have been taught at that point in time. You just need leadership that is able to think ahead, not this leadership that continues to only think of itself and to think about the here and now, because it benefits no one. The reality is that our changes, the changes that we hope to see, can only come in future, not right now. Ideally, right now, the first thing that would need to happen is a change at the very top. A change at the very top can hopefully influence change at the very bottom. If that would happen, then I can promise you that that language is going to be a milestone and specifically a key milestone in us as a continent moving forward and going ahead and being more united and i want to also touch on one of the points that you that you that you that you made how this union of languages is going to take us places if we continue to observe what is happening just by uh, ourselves when you come when you when you are comfortable enough traveling all over the continent uh, you will start looking, you will start as, a, as an academic and specifically a scholar. What I do is I travel a lot, you know, and I go to places in the continent. Um, I do not know French. I do not speak French. I, I do want to learn it, but I feel bad when I have to learn another colonial language. But I notice how when you go to these conferences, these um, meetings that happen throughout these seminars, Africans automatically move towards those who speak the colonial language that they speak. I remember recently I was in, in Senegal and the, what I noticed was actually quite problematic where the Francophone people, the people who speak French uh, from different countries, we had people from Chad, we had people from the Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire, we had people from Senegal, we had people from all over the continent. The people who speak French would cluster together, make friendships, and unite. The people who spoke English clustered together, made friends, and united. Those of who spoke Portuguese are not, you know, because it's not that well spoken throughout the continent. It is spoken, but not too, too well. So they can fall either way. What I noticed, there was this disjointment of a union. It was this in a uh, disembodying of us as a union as a continent because of these foreign languages that we've decided to make ourselves so fluent in just that told you that it became difficult for us to agree on basic ideas and ideology on ideas on taking the continent forward or ideas of what is wrong with the continent those who spoke english were able to uh were, were, were arguing that the reason why the continent it is is where it is is primarily because of uh western powers understanding that obviously we know that our leadership itself is problematically corrupt and those from who spoke french made the argument that our leadership are the primary people who are corrupt and who are problematic in the continent you see just because of the languages that we speak the ideas of what is wrong in the continent were in polar opposites 
And that is where our biggest problem is as a continent. If we could start with that, I'm not saying it is the perfect ultimate solution right. to our problems, but I am arguing that that could actually take us somewhere so that we can understand each other and get better with ourselves and get more along with ourselves within the continent. Of course, there's always a first step, uh, first step to be taken for change to occur, and we are hoping that uh, if Africa adopts the issue of uh, trying to come up with a single language, then uh, the uh, continents uh, might be moving towards the uh, right direction. And now uh, we have a few more minutes to be together. Now uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, the uh, uh, who is at the helm of La Francophonie. Uh, we have an African at the top of La Francophonie. Now um, I want to look at it in a general context. Uh, is it possible that uh, when uh, for an African to be in an influential position like the one uh, Luis Mushikibabo is in, she is from Rwanda, is it possible that uh, these uh, leaders, when they find themselves in such positions, they can always push the agenda of the continent? Or is there some uh, kind of uh, politics behind that uh, suppresses their and their powers at uh, that uh, uh, in that position that they are not able to uh, push the agenda of the uh, continent uh, because now when you listen to some african uh, leaders uh, they are saying uh, that uh, the, uh, the, the they are making accusations uh, on la francophonie that they are more focused on uh, uh, the conflict or the crisis in ukraine and they have little or nothing to say about uh, what has been going on in the continent can africans who find themselves in a, a position of uh, uh, influence actually push the agenda of the continent? It's, it's very difficult. You know, I always think about how members of the African continent have had influential positions in the UN. But what has that done to, um, what has that done at the bottom, uh, specifically in Africa? You know, it is it is very difficult for for them. Uh, it's easy for me to critique them because of their positions and argue that they should be doing more um, mm. in terms of making sure that they push an agenda which favors Africa. Mm. But the reality is that they, 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 it's difficult for them themselves. That at the end of the day, they themselves are basically limited in their power. It doesn't matter if they say that you sit at the head of the table. The most influential people are the people whose language you are speaking in that position. And there's only one country that is basically the head of them all. You can argue that an African is a head or is, is the head or is the chair of the Francophonie. But the people who will always be influential and the, the people who are going to take the most important decisions are the French. You know, Macron is going to be the one who is going to be the dominant voice one way or another in this engagement. It is not going to be everyone else. I always look at the Commonwealth as well. South Africa doesn't necessarily have a voice in the Commonwealth. All they do is to make sure that they continue to satisfy the demands of the Brits. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, that is their role. It doesn't matter how influential you are. In an ideal world, what would happen is that these people would get there and they would make sure that they raise the most important problems for the continent. The war in Ukraine, it might not affect us as they want to make it look like it is affecting us because we know in terms of grains, we've had this engagement on the program, how it is affecting our, uh, the continent itself. But the reality is that we've been having wars that have been perpetual, continuously and stopping in the continent to their no avail. You know, they did not play a significant role in trying to make sure that these wars are the ground. But because now white people are dying in Europe, it's supposed to be a problem for us all. Our problems at home, if my children are not eating at home, why should I worry about my neighbor's children who are not uh, drinking coffee because they only have tea? You, you understand what I'm saying? It's not supposed to be my problem. It does not concern me because the main problem and the main priority for me should be us at the very ground, should be us as Africans at home who are struggling until this day, who cannot, I mean, just now, in Ethiopia, Tigray was on the brink of famine. And you can easily make the argument that it was faced with famine. Just now, because of warfare, because of greedy leadership, as a leadership which only aims to make sure that it satisfies itself and its needs. 
you know and when i say this i'm specifically referring to both camps i'm not uh, I, i'm not uh, dividing this my position in this context you know so it is it is it is with noting that it is difficult for us to say that we should be able to sit down on the table and try to find a position in specifically in the Ukraine and Russia war, when at the end of the day, we've continued to suffer without them having to make sure that they assist us at the very ground as Africa. No African in their right head should be crying right now for the realities of what is happening out there. There's been wars that have been happening in the Middle East that have been happening in Africa. Africans have died in their numbers. Africans continue to die in their numbers until this day. It might not be directly through war, but as a result of wars, whether it is civil or not, but the reality is that they continue, we continue to suffer throughout this continent. Why should the priority for us be positioning ourselves in a situation that is so far away from us? You know, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what Macron says. Macron's position in this reality is that we need to make sure that we back uh, Ukraine. And we've known that is a position that he's going to take. Even before the war, he knew that Russia was planning. The rest of the world knew. Leadership knew what Russia was planning. He was trying to make sure that he has his house in order. When I say his house, I'm specifically speaking about Africa as a continent. These uh, countries that he continues to benefit from, he has them in order so that everyone can speak in one union, uh, uh, in one united voice and say, but Russia is wrong. If Russia is doing good for Africa, why should we care if they continue to kill other white people in Europe? Why should it be our problem when we continue to die in this day and age? Why should it be our problem as Africans if they continue to say we are going to make sure that we as Russia are going to work with Africa to make sure that we remove them from imperialistic positions that they find themselves and continue to suffer from? Why should it now be our problem as Africans to now rise and say we shall stand with Macron just because we, he is a part of La Francophonie or we are a part of La Francophonie? Then we are also idiots and in a position of idiocy that we just accept as is. We are also a problem if that is the case. Just a few more minutes uh, to uh, be together. Africans need to start uh, uh, placing themselves uh, in high esteem and uh, stop uh, uh, depending on uh, the outside world to come and solve their problems for them. And we know some uh, Pan-Africanists have uh, come up with the ideology that, or uh, of the ideology that, uh, this uh, the, uh, the partisan uh, politics in Africa is what is actually killing the continent where we have uh, so many political parties and uh, people are divided amongst themselves because Africa at this point should be looking for a way forward to uh, coming together to make things better for the continent. Uh, so uh, in your opinion, what, uh, uh, what form of uh, governance or what can the continent actually do uh, to have Africans come together? Because we have seen a case in Malawi the people, when the coup d'etat took place, Asimi Goita took over power, the people were actually for it, but we have uh, blocks like the ECOWAS who were still uh, placing sanctions on, uh, the, uh, on, 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 on the country, and they don't listen to what the people have to say. Don't you think that our leaders should start listening to the people? No, it's, it's a given. It's a given. That's the most important thing. Uh, the question of a government that we need as Africans, it, it is a very difficult one because if tomorrow the AU or miraculously all leaders of the continent were to say, we want a one continent Africa, we will start with, uh, how do you start with that? Um, you, you, you use the blueprint that was set up by Europe, right? Mm. You start with saying, we are going to push down policies that say that we need uh, authentic leadership throughout the continent. Uh, when I say authentic, we say that voting is going to be regulated by the AU. And we make sure that the AU itself is uncorruptible. It is not corrupt. We start by saying we make sure that at the ground, the policies that are pushed by the governing parties or the governments that are in place at the ground, when I say the ground, individual countries, mm -hmm. I mean individual countries, when these policies that are pushed are pushed towards making sure that the people on the ground are not oppressed by the government and the government does not continue to be corrupt. If we do that, then now we have 
we have tried to battle what we have tried to make sure that we've battled corruption throughout the continent right and this all started at the very top and the next move would be we make sure that now we push towards trade but the best way for us to get towards trade and to solve this is to make sure that we deal with currency we make sure that we push towards a one currency, currency. continent by doing that it simplifies our trade within ourselves before we trade with the rest of the world and we can actually have a contending uh, position against currencies such as the usa dollar if we are able to do that then we are also doing something else which is very important we are kicking out france because they still have a stranglehold on a number of francophone countries just because of the currency the cfa you know yes. just because of that once you do that, you have introduced the currency, you are basically killing multiple bids with one stone. Once that is done, now we can get to matters of making sure that we become more united through language. If that could happen, I can promise you that several years, and obviously I'm speaking hypothetically, as I said, in an ideal world, what would happen in several years, we'd be able to say now we can hold uh, elections. Our president would turn into, govern, into governors of countries with one president. And the agenda of the continent would be set all the way from the top. We could be able to do that. Do you think that Africa would still find itself with these um, internal uh, conflicts that we continue to see? Ideology will always differ. One language is not obviously a one key uh, uh, a one key answer to everything. It is not. Ideally, it would be, but in reality, it is not. But in that situation, what would happen is that our economies would be better, which is going to take down the number of coups that we see. And coups would be limited because at the very top stands the AU as the governing organization of the entire country, which stands with its own presidency. We would find ourselves with limited civil wars in the continent because who are you fighting with? You know, you are fighting amongst yourself. It doesn't benefit anyone. We would have a, a, a military that is capable to protect the entirety of the continent. I guess not just these uh, uh, these military groups, these, uh, what do you call this, these terrorist groups that we continue to see, these rebel groups, but also from external interventions from these people who come externally and they are able to influence where we stay. And by doing that, we'd be able to get rid of these military camps that we continue to see that belong to the United States. We would be able to handle what is happening in the Horn of Africa with all these military bases that continue to occupy mm. that space. You, you know, it would actually take us somewhere if that kind of government would be implemented from the very top. But as I said, this is idea, idealistic thinking and hypothetical thinking. But I promise you, implementation of this would actually take us somewhere. This is actually a start point for us as a continent to move away from our, our current position. Thank you so much, uh, Paseka. We are hoping that uh, our leaders are listening and uh, they can actually uh, put all of this in practice. And as Africans, we can always come together uh, to uh, see how we can uh, take the continent forward uh, with our different ideas and our different uh, uh, actions to uh, put the agenda of the continent so much so that, push the agenda of the continent so much so that it can uh, take the continent out of uh, the hounds of uh, imperialist because at this point uh, imperialists still, still seem to have a hold of the continents and that is something that uh, most Africans especially Pan-Africanists are struggling to fight against. I uh, want to thank you so much uh, Paseka for taking our time to be with us on the program this day. Thank you so much for your uh, great insights this day on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this engagement. All right, looking forward to having you uh, in some other edition of the program. Uh, that, uh, that was Paseka Farumele joining us uh, all the way from South Africa. He is a member of uh, the Convention of 
uh, Pan-Africanism and uh, Progress, CPP. I want to thank all our televiewers who took out time to be with us on the program, uh, who uh, were able to stay glued to their television sets to uh, follow us and uh, uh, help us to find solutions to uh, the problems that the continent is facing at this point in time. We also thank all our technicians uh, uh, who were there to touch the buttons to uh, make the program a successful one. And our thanks uh, goes out also to the entire English desk of uh, Africa Media who put heads together to make the program a successful one. Do join us tomorrow at the same time, uh, 14 hours uh, GMT uh, for another exciting edition of the program. We shall be continuing to see how we can seek African uh, solutions to African problems. Until then, you have a lovely uh, day in the company of more programs on Africa Media. Very appreciate it and very appreciate it and very appreciate all what you are.